today we're going to be talking about how to put the equation of a quadric surface into standard form and use the standard form to identify the figure. And in this particular video, we're going to be addressing the equations of four different quadric surfaces. The first one we're going to deal with is y squared is equal to x squared plus z squared divided by 9. So when it comes to dealing with quadric surfaces, often one of the most important things we're looking for is which of our variables are involved in the equation because sometimes we have all three, as in this case, x, y, and z, but sometimes we only have two. We're also interested in which variables are on which sides of the equal sign, and more specifically, which variables are on their own. So notice here we have y on its own, separate from x and z. And then we're also interested in the sign of each of our variables. So for example, we'd be interested if we had x squared minus z squared over 9, that would be a different standard form than x squared plus z squared over 9. So we're interested again in which variables are involved, where they're located, and the signs on each one. So keep in mind here that for this equation, we have all three variables involved. All three signs are positive, but one of the variables is on its own on a different side than the other two. I've created a chart that helps us with the standard forms for each of our quadric surfaces. So let's go take a look at that, keeping in mind what we've said about our first equation here. So if you go ahead and take a look at this chart, here I've got a bunch of different quadric surfaces and there's a couple more below that are off screen here. But notice that in the first row, for example, is an ellipsoid and we've got a picture of what that surface looks like and the standard form when the ellipsoid has a center at the origin or the point zero, zero, zero. And then I have here as well the shifted form if the center of the ellipsoid is at some point other than the origin. So if I look in my standard form column here, I'm looking for a standard form that has all three variables involved, and I'm looking for a standard form that has one of those variables separate from the other two on one side of the equation. When that happens, I'm also looking for all three variables to be positive. So for example, the standard form of the ellipsoid all three of my variables are on the same side and they're positive. That doesn't match my form because remember I have two variables on one side, one variable on the other, and they're all positive. Here for the equation of the cone, I have two variables on one side, one on the other, and they're all positive. That matches the form that I have in my other equation. If I look briefly at the standard forms of some of these others, here for the cylinder I only have two variables involved, that doesn't match. Here for the elliptic paraboloid, I have all three variables involved, but my z variable is not squared. In order for my equation to be an elliptic paraboloid, I would need two of my variables squared and the other one not squared, and that's not the case with my equation. Same thing here with the hyperbolic paraboloid, two of the variables are squared and the other isn't. So none of these others seem to fit, which really narrows it down to the equation of the cone here. Now, based on my chart, what else do I know about my cone? Well, first of all, I know it's not a shifted cone because all my variables are just x squared, y squared, and z squared as opposed to this x minus h quantity squared, y minus k quantity squared, etc. Remember, if I look back at my equation, see I just have x squared, z squared, and y squared. So it's not a shifted cone. That means the center here is at the origin. What about its axis? Realize here that in my chart, I have x squared and y squared together on the left-hand side and z squared alone on the right-hand side. If I look at my axis set by column, I see that the variable by itself on one side of the equal sign is the variable that sets the axis. So the cone here that's shown, the axis of this cone is the z-axis, which matches this standard form here when z is on its own. But if I go look back at the equation I've been given here, I can see that y squared is on its own separate from x squared and z squared. That tells me that this cone is going to open up along the y-axis as opposed to opening up along the z-axis. And then the last thing that I need to know is that this 9 in the denominator under my z squared is going to make this an elliptic cone that's stretched out vertically along the z-axis. So here's what that looks like briefly. If I were to draw a picture of this here in a three-dimensional coordinate system where I have x, y, and z. Briefly here, centered at the origin, I would have a cone that looks like this that opens up along the y-axis and is elongated along the z-axis. So the opening of my cone is not perfectly circular. If this 9 weren't here, essentially I'd have y squared over 1 is equal to x squared over 1 plus z squared over 1. If that's the case and my denominators are all equal, then I have a circular opening to my cone. But here, because I have this 9 under my z squared, then I'm going to be elongated. I'm going to have an elliptic cone where the opening is an ellipse, 
and the major axis of the ellipse is parallel to my z axis since I have this larger number under my z squared here. Keep in mind that the cone is going to go this way as well, so we can go ahead and draw that in. But if we look at our chart, we know that this equation, y squared is equal to x squared plus z squared over 9, is already in standard form, so we can go ahead and leave it that way. Let's look at x squared plus 2y minus 2z squared is equal to 0. Well, if you remember from our chart, we never really had the standard form of a quadric surface equal to zero. We never had a zero constant over here on the right-hand side by itself. So what can we do? Well, this y variable here is kind of sticking out like a sore thumb because it's the only variable that's not squared. We've got x squared and z squared, but y to the first power. So why don't we try solving this for y and see if we can make it look more like standard form? In order to do that, we'll say 2y is equal to, we'll add 2z squared to both sides and get 2z squared, and we'll subtract x squared from both sides to get minus x squared. Now if we divide both sides by 2, we get y is equal to z squared minus x squared over 2. Now let's take a look at this for a second and realize that we have two of our variables squared, z and x are squared, y is not squared y is by itself over here on the left versus z and x are together, and I have all of my terms positive except this x squared term here is negative. So let's keep a couple of those things in mind and then go look over here at our chart. If we look here, we know already that we're looking for one first degree variable and two second degree variables. In other words, two variables are squared and one is not. That's not the case in either of these first two rows. The cylinder only has two variables involved, x and y. My elliptic paraboloid here is my first option. I have two variables that are squared, x and y, and z is not squared. However, remember that our equation, with the side of the equation that had the two variables squared, one of them was negative, right? On the right-hand side, we had z squared minus x squared, so we've got to have a negative over here on this side. If we look at the hyperbolic paraboloid, we see that we have x squared and y squared on the left-hand side together, and this y squared term is negative with a first-degree z variable over on the right. That standard form matches ours, so we want to identify our function as a hyperbolic paraboloid. This chart also tells us that the variable that's not squared sets the axis for the hyperbolic paraboloid, and the hyperbolic paraboloid opens up along that axis. So you see here the hyperbolic paraboloid that's pictured opens up along the z-axis when in standard form the z variable isn't squared. So if we look back at our equation, the y variable isn't squared, so if we were going to draw it here, this would open up along the y y-axis. This chart also tells us that when c, the denominator under the variable that's not squared, when that's positive, the hyperbolic paraboloid opens up, and when it's negative, the hyperbolic paraboloid opens down. And what we mean by up and down really here is in the positive direction of that axis or the negative direction of that axis. So if we look back here, we know that it's going to open along the y-axis, but because this is over a positive 1 here, because this is equal to c and c is positive, we know that this is going to open up in the positive direction of the y-axis as opposed to the negative direction of the y-axis. So we called this first one here an elliptic cone, and we're going to call our second one a hyperbolic paraboloid. Now if I look at my third equation here and I compare it to the standard forms from my chart, all the standard forms on my chart have x variables grouped together, y variables grouped together, z variables grouped together, even in the shifted form. So what I know right away that I should do is group my x variables together, my y variables together, and my z variables together, and I might be completing the square with respect to x, y, and z. So let's take a look at that. If I put my x's by themselves, I've just got 4x squared here. If I put my y's together, I've got y squared and minus 4y, so I have plus y squared minus 4y. If I put my z's together, I've got plus 4z squared minus 24z, and then lastly, I have my constant, which I can just leave out here on the right as plus 36. Now I want to go ahead and complete the square with respect to y and z so I can get perfect squares here. Remember that when we do that, we take the coefficient on the first degree term here, so in the case of y, that's negative 4. We take that coefficient and we divide it by 2. In this case, we're going to get negative 2. And then we take our result and square it, and the result of negative 2 squared is a positive 4. 
So positive 4 is what we're going to add to y squared minus 4y to make this a perfect square. So we're going to add to this positive 4. That means, of course, that we're going to need to subtract 4 on the same side of the equation so that we don't fundamentally change the equation itself. So we have plus 4, and then we're going to do 36 minus 4 later. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for z here. What we need to realize, though, is that we can factor out a 4 first. We always want the coefficient on our second degree term to be 1 before we complete the square. So we'll factor out a 4 and get 4 times z squared minus 6z. We take the coefficient on our first degree term, which is negative 6. We divide it by 2. That gives us a negative 3. We square that, and that gives us a positive 9. So we're going to add 9 to that. But keep in mind here that we're going to add 9 inside the parentheses. And because we have that multiplied by 4 on the outside, that's like adding 36 to this left-hand side of the equation. So we want to make sure we subtract 36 from the left-hand side of the equation as well. So now if we go ahead and write this out, we've got 4x squared. For y here, we have plus. If we factor y squared minus 4y plus 4, what we get is y minus 2 quantity squared. If we factor z squared minus 6z plus 9, what we get is z minus 3 quantity squared. So we're going to get plus 4 times z minus 3 quantity squared. And then for our constants here, we have 36 minus the 36 is 0, minus 4 is negative 4. If we go ahead and add 4 to both sides, it'll cancel on the left and we'll be left with a positive 4 over here on the right. Now we want to go ahead and divide through both sides of the equation by 4 to get rid of these coefficients. So what we're going to be left with is x squared plus quantity y minus 2 squared all divided by 4 plus quantity z minus 3 squared is equal to 1. Now if I look at this, I notice that I have x, y, and z involved. They're all squared, they're all together on the left-hand side, and they're all positive, except that I know immediately I'm going to have a shifted quadric surface because I have this y minus 2 and a z minus 3. I can treat this x squared as if it were x minus 0 squared to put it in the same form as the others and get a center later on. But keep in mind just that I have all three variables, they're all on the same side together, and they're all positive. If I go back here and I look at my chart, what I see is that I have ellipsoid in the first row, I have x, y, and z that are all squared together, they're all positive, they're all on the left-hand side together. So I know I'm dealing with an ellipsoid, and if I look at the shifted form, that's even more similar. I notice that the center of my ellipsoid here in shifted form is HKL, which is just these values that come from X minus H, Y minus K, and Z minus L. So what that tells me, if I go back to my equation here, is that this is an ellipsoid, and we can go ahead and indicate that the center of the ellipsoid is at, and we'll pull these directly out of here, x minus 0, y minus 2, and z minus 3. So my center is 0, 2, 3, instead of an ellipsoid being centered at the origin. If I look at my last equation here, this is going to be similar to the third example. I want to pull my x terms together, my y terms together, my z terms together, and then complete the square. So what we're going to get here is x squared minus 4x plus negative y squared minus 2y plus z squared minus 2z, and then I'll have plus 4 is equal to 0. If I want to go ahead and complete the square now, I take the coefficient on this first degree x term, which is negative 4. I'm going to divide that by 2, and I'll get negative 2. When I square it, I'll get a positive 4. So I want to add 4 to this one, but I also want to subtract 4 from this side. For y, I need to go ahead and factor out a negative sign, so I'm going to get minus quantity y squared plus 2y. Now I want to take the coefficient on my y term, so that's 2. I'm going to divide that by 2. The result is 1. When I square it, I get a result of 1. So I want to add 1 to this. But keep in mind, because I have this negative sign out in front, that that's like subtracting a 1. So I need to go ahead and add 1 on this left-hand side to balance it out. And then for z here, my coefficient is negative 2. So I take negative 2, divide it by 2, I get negative 1. I square that and my result is 1. So I want to go ahead and add 1 inside the parentheses here and then subtract 1 to balance it out on the left-hand side.
So now when I write my squares, when I factor x squared minus 4x plus 4, I'm going to get a quantity x minus 2 squared. Keep in mind here I have this minus sign, so that's going to go out in front. For y here, I have y squared plus 2y plus 1. When I factor that, I get y plus 1 squared. And then for z, I have z squared minus 2z plus 1. When I factor that, I get z minus 1 quantity squared. And then here I have 4 minus 4 is 0, plus 1 minus 1 is still 0, so I'm going to get this equal to 0. Now remember when I looked at my chart and standard form, I never had a quadric surface standard form equation that was equal to zero. So what do we want to do? Probably we want to take this negative value right here, the negative y plus one quantity squared, and add it to both sides so that we have all three terms as positive. So we'll have x minus two quantity squared plus z minus one quantity squared is equal to positive y plus one quantity squared. So now notice that I have all three variables involved, x, y, and z, but I have x and z together on one side, y by itself on the other side. All three terms are positive. All three variables here are squared. I've got an x squared, a y squared, and a z squared. So if I go back and I look at my chart, I'm looking for all three variables. I'm looking for all three to be squared. I'm looking for all three to be positive, but I'm looking for one by itself alone on one side of the equal sign. The standard form that matches that is the equation here of the cone where I have x squared and y squared on one side, and then I have z squared by itself on the other side. All three terms are positive. Remember here for a cone that the variable by itself on one side of the equation dictates the axis of the cone. And remember that if I have a shifted cone, I'm taking my center from h, k, and l here from x minus h, y minus k, and z minus l. So if I go back here and look at my equation, I have y alone by itself on one side, so I know that my cone is going to open up along the y-axis. Based on my values here, I know the center of my cone is going to be at 2, 1, and then negative 1 because I have a y plus 1, but my standard form would say y minus 1. So I have to take into account this sign, and I can go ahead and indicate the center here of 2, 1, negative 1 is the center. Remember that in my standard form, this is x divided by a squared, z divided by c squared, and y divided by b squared. When a, b, and c are all equal to each other, which they are here because they're all equal to 1, there are no denominators, that means the opening of my cone is going to be circular. So I know that instead of where this was an elliptic cone because this 9 value was greater than x squared divided by 1 and y squared divided by 1 here, this was an elliptic cone because a, b, and c are equal, I'm going to be dealing here with a circular cone. So we identify this as a circular cone with center 2, 1, negative 1. So those are just a few examples of how you can take these equations of quadric surfaces, put them into standard form, and then use the standard form to identify the quadric surface.